Hi, this is Cindy with the Port Huron Recreation Department bringing you watercolors with Cindy. Today we're going to focus on some more techniques and then next time we're going to put it all together in a collage. Here we go. And the first thing we're going to focus on is learning how to do a little bit of Zentangle, a technique that is just pretty much drawing different shapes and then coloring them in with patterns. Um, then after that, you can either use your watercolors to paint it. You can color in each section. You can just do kind of a wet on wet where you get it a little bit wet and you touch the color on it and it spreads through and then use different colors and they can kind of mingle together and have like a kind of a marbling effect. So here is, here's a sample of some Zentangle that I've done basically with the different patterns in each shape of each item. another one and if you want to take a screenshot of this feel free to go ahead and uh, swipe some of these ideas if you want to use them in your own little designs this is this is one that I pulled off of the internet so there's a lot out there you can actually go and Google Zentangle patterns and a lot of stuff will show up A bit windy today so hopefully nothing gets blown away <laughs> all right so I'm gonna start by drawing uh, maybe something that looks kind of like coral or seaweed or something that this little fish you notice that I've got my fish that I traced a while back on here I just want to give them a little environment for when I do the actual collage. So I'm just doing some squiggles. It kind of looks like something you'd find in the water. And do a littler one. I encourage you to just kind of go with the flow and whatever comes out of your hands here. As you're going, take that and run with it. Um, we'll do another little guy over here. So that's kind of my design so far. Now I'm going to start by adding, I don't know, just a couple designs in here. Um, I kind of like doing funny looking things sometimes. Organic stuff, usually. So just little circles in here. That's about it. You just keep on drawing. Add a little dots in there if you want. Um, the, using the Sharpie marker will make everything permanent for when you want to go ahead and watercolor right over it. I'm standing up so it's a little harder to hold my hand here and do this so and talk it's 
So you get the idea on that one. This guy will do something different. Let's see. I'll stick with the circles theme, but I'm going to make little dots with a swirl. Dots with a swirl. They're not going to be perfect. That's okay. Kind of like eyeballs. <laughs> so that's how we'll do that one. And then for the little guy, I want to do something a little different. Looks like a minion so far. It's just a line with a circle in there and you just keep repeating it and it's pretty random I'm kind of just offsetting them so they don't run into each other remember to carry it all the way over Sometimes you don't have to have one. And so my homework will be to finish this for next time. And I just want to say that you can either do shapes like this and cut them out or you can make a whole pad, a whole bunch of patterns all over your your piece of paper right here because we're using the half sheets again and pretend that's it and then you could use that and cut it out or tear it, use it for your collage so we'll show you that at the next one when we put it all together um, I might have another one of these that I can just go ahead and use too so you'll be able to see that Okay, the next uh, one we're going to do is the fish here, actually. And since I was doing Zentangle on here, I thought, well, why not on the fish? So since I showed you a little bit of that, we'll just show you another one with the fish. Giving him, him an eyeball. You don't need to, because if you want to use some little plastic eyes, Google eyes or something. If you want to stick that on later, you could do that too. Give the bubbles a little shine. Then some personality. And then here's where you can kind of do a little bit more of the Zentangle. So, I challenge you guys to go ahead and decorate your fish. Have him have your Zentangle, uh, oh, I'm sorry, or your butterfly. You can do the same kind of thing on there. It's like if this was his wing, you would do kind of the same thing. You could give him some colors, some little color blocks. Like that, even. 
And then you could do little dots in each, in one. You could do like lines, crosshatch. So there's all kinds of ideas. I encourage you to look on the internet. That'll be a, a good thing for you to learn how to use the internet and find some different designs out there for the Zentangle. Okay, now we have something different to do. This is the, going to go with the painting portion of it. I'm going to use this rock again. He's holding down my project so I don't it doesn't blow away on me. Move it over here. So I started a leaf project. Um, basically, I painted on the back of a leaf, and then I stamped it right on there. So this might be a good one for the butterfly people. So I'm getting my brush wet. Gonna get some red on here and use your paper towel so it doesn't get all over everything and just paint right on the back of there. It should stay wet for a little while. Um, don't use too thick of a paint. Um, make sure your paint's just a little thin enough so it'll spread. You can pounce it like this so it'll get off your brush a little easier. Uh, you might get a little messy. That's okay. Make sure you do wash your hands when you're done before you touch things. Uh, Mom or Dad might not be too happy if you did that. <laughs> so I left a little spot right at the end there so I could grab it. There goes some of my paper towels. Turn it over. That's what it looks like. Turn it over. Push it down. I think this was a citronella plant. You can kind of, I think the thicker leaves kind of work a little bit better. But there you go. And that will give you like flowers or it'll kind of look like under the water even. Like seaweed. Um, go ahead and fill your whole paper if you can. So here's the other leaf that I did earlier. It's kind of, they kind of wilt, so you got to get them and use them quick. Let's see if I can still use this guy. Uh, I'm going to try to blend on this one now. Should use the yellow first, but that's okay. Wipe the brush off, put it in the water, and wipe it off again. Get it wet to pick up the yellow. And pounce it on there. Get your stem a little bit. Flip it over. Push it down. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, he turned out okay. Do it one more time, get all the paint off of there. There. The veins underneath the leaves make a nice pattern. So I'll try, I'll bring a little purple in here this time. Purple with the red that's already on it. <laughs> Keep forgetting how light this purple is. But it should be all right. I'm 
Another thing you could do besides leaves is just find some different objects around the house, sponges, um, gosh, uh, brush, like uh, cleaning brushes are good too. They make some funny looking shapes. Get that guy on there, have them overlap, that's fine. I have some more leaves. Try a maple leaf. green. You can flip your brush over it too. Make sure you get all the paint like that. I'm going to get a little yellow. I like more of a lime green. So. Okay, if you're a towel, if you're outside by chance and your stuff's blowing away, fold the towel over and don't let the wind rule your day. Just take control. Here we go. Looking good. Yeah, I mixed that in. Okay. So that looks a little runnier than I would have done, but we'll see how it goes. All right, here it goes. We're going to flip it over. Maple leaf. Oh, that's kind of nice. I think this might be one of my favorite techniques so far. Okay, so that's the leaf painting technique using the veins. And we'll let that dry it over. Actually, we'll leave it like this. That way we'll just use down here and that can dry because my hand will get in that. It will happen. All right, hold that guy down. So the next one is, since everything's wet over here, I'm going to show you how to do a little bit of It's kind of, it's called hand printing or finger printing. So we'll start with a color orange and you can see I got a little bit on my finger there. I'm going to just start doodling with it. If it's a little wet, tap it off like that. So we kind of have a flower shape going on. Yep, your hands will get dirty, but they will clean off. It's all good. Now, I used most of my finger there. Now I'm going to just use the tip of my finger to make a smaller spot out there. Dry your finger off. It might help if you had a wet paper towel here. Then 
I'm gonna use my thumb. It's a little bigger. Got a little bit of green, well, yellow green. There's a nice flower. And then, if you want, you can even draw. Wait till it dries. I'm just showing you. You can draw little accents on your colors, and then you can totally tell that it's a flower. If you want a stem, take your brush, get a little green on it, and just drag from the center. Just like that. And how are you going to make some leaves for that flower? Well, with your finger, of course. I'm going to use the side of my finger this time, over here, like that, Boop. Boop. just like that, there's a little flower, alright, let's try some seaweed, that should be pretty easy, right? Uh, mine's going to be a little wilder than the regular seaweed, so... Starts drying out, get a little bit of water there. And if you like to blend the colors like I do, get a lighter color after this. And it's still a little bit wet. You can go right in there and tap in a little bit of yellow or blue would probably go good on a plant. So there you go. This is a little bit of fingerprinting. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Um, if you want to make a little bug, we could do that really quick. Do one little. We have a little bee for the butterfly. There's bugs in the water too, so like little water beetles. We'll make a. Hmm, I'll make a brown one. Okay, we haven't used brown yet. All right. So we just got to add a little head, eyes, maybe some little antennas. He looks like he's smiling. All right, and then he's got wings probably, like that. So there you go, really easy peasy. And if you wanted accents on this guy, you could put little dots all around it because I bet there's dots on these things. Little grooves. There you have it. So today we got some Zentangle going on the seaweed or flowers or plants uh, for the butterfly. And then we did some Zentangle on this fish, which we can also do on the butterfly. Just use the different techniques. And again, uh, I'll show that in just a second. 
This is the leaf print printing, the backs of the leaves with the veins, uh, with a couple of different color blending techniques on there. And then your fingerprinted accents, flower, seaweed, little bug, little beetle. Here's the one I pulled off the internet. You want to swipe some of your designs from that. Take a quick screenshot of that one. There's another one I did. If you want to draw something and then take the different shapes into it, like that. There's this one, it's a little wild, but it's got some more different, different ideas there. So thank you for joining me. Uh, I'm looking forward to putting this all together with all the different projects that we've done. Um, definitely going to be pretty neat and I really can't wait to see what everybody's done. Have a great day and we'll see you next time on session four. Bye.